We live in a post-mania world. You're gonna have to impress me. First of all, is the Switch port playable? You know, as soon as they announced that the game would be 60 FPS, which is silky smooth with only occasional drops, I was pretty sure it would look far worse than the other platforms, even if it isn't super demanding. And, well, the game genuinely looks better on my screen than it does after the capture software. You know, it's very jagged in the footage that you can see here, but it's really not that bad on a full screen. On top of the fact that it has worse visuals, you know, the, it has muddier textures, not all around, but certainly in the background and certainly on specific things. For the most part, it does have a nice sharp look, but again, it, there's less detailed geometry, the lighting has less of a warmth, to it and this yeah, the stupid little blue guy it's the weirdest thing he doesn't have a shadow he's just sliding around it's it's not it, of all the things in the visuals it's like that's my least favorite because it's the most noticeable especially in cutscenes so it just it has this off-putting effect but I was, I was wary that superstars wouldn't be better than sonic mania so with that in mind i didn't i didn't hype myself up that initial gameplay reveal was like a big surprise. I really, really enjoyed seeing that the controls are so accurate to how the originals play. Even though I didn't want to hype myself up, I thought I can't see this being any less anything less than a good game at worst. First of all, the controls are bad. Fantastic. Like, they are as good as I thought they would be, maybe even a little bit better. There is obviously that, I don't know if cognitive dissonance is the word, but no, no, just, it's the classic dissonance is all, you know, yeah, it's classic dissonance. The originals are sprite based and, you know, they have different frame stops and this one is 3D. It just has a different camera, it has a different overall look, so there's maybe a bit of a, I guess, different feeling, but I, I, I've seen it online on, you know, x.com, my favorite social media platform next to B and C, the, the physics are accurate and it's also approved by Christian Whitehead. There's no complaints there for me. It just it is also sensitivity. It, if you do feel it sucks because you suck. God it feels like a dream. Love how it controls. The meat of the game is the level design, which is the most important thing to discuss when it comes to Sonic the Hedgehog. I have some mixed things to say, but I just want to express how good I think the level design is. It's it's good. It's really fun, man. There's like this really great balance of speed and platforming here. You know, Sonic isn't all speed, and I think that this game does a great job of slowing you down when it's necessary, slowing you down in certain routes, and giving you speed when you're good at it, and having levels that are centered around platforming having levels that are centered around speed to give you the best of both worlds. Level design can only be so good if there isn't a creative aspect here and I do think that that's present in this game um, with certain gimmicks that I have not seen in any other Sonic game before which is what um, I wanted to see. So uh, you know the first example I want to talk about is Press Factory Act 1. It fits classic Sonic. It's like yeah of course this this asshole would have a, a statue of himself and you know he would have a factory because he you know, it's it's the environmental aspect of Sonic that we know and love that is integral to the series. So of course he has this disgusting factory. And what what I love about the level design in Press Factory, environmental gimmick that's going on in the background is uh, it affects you as the player. It, it bounces you up and down. It goes down, you go up. It actually is a little bit higher than the jumps. So there's certain level design that actually opens up because of this. And you have all this machinery and you know like platforms and I think big anvils that that crush you, clamping down every single time the big thing goes down, uh, you know, the timing as well, and it's it's such a cool level. I really, really like that aspect, uh, that gimmick that they laid into Press Factory. It fits with what they're trying to do, it fits with what uh, the speed platformer is, because it boosts you, it boosts the enemies. It's a cool level. Uh, Egg Fortress 1, where there's a, you know, a 3D disc uh, that you can stand on that goes in and out of the foreground, you're really taking advantage of the fact that this is in back to 3D game. It's technically a 3D Sonic. It's not a 3D Sonic. You know, all, all of that happens while you're dodging flamethrowers and that's on top of round control major time. Round control major time. I'm floating in an 
Captain Can and I'm floating far away. Bridge Zone hyped me up and I just had a smile on my face the whole time I was playing on it because it's just it's those curved ramps. I don't know I don't know what to call them. I'm just gonna call them for curved ramps. They're such a thrill to ride and I just think you know it's it's such a cool type of design both uh, from a gameplay and visual standpoint that isn't hasn't really been done in a level before. Bridge Island Zone is everything an opening level should be. It sprinkles in some new ideas. It stylistically stands out from previous opening zones to not just be another green hill and it gives you so many different routes it's just great to speed run topping it off with lot with this large scale robot fish that just starts tearing everything up and yeah oh, the sunset backdrop in act two it's just it's very very cool beautiful set of stages but cyber station on a whole other level god i love cyber station just wow Everything about this level just oozes charm and it just feels like a situation where the developers were just having so much fun with uh, how crazy they could go in a new Sonic game. This is the moment where I think everything culminated and crossed into one single peak. The complete art style change, which must have taken them so long. It, like It's visible how much effort and polish went into this part of the game, into this level. It's like they really, really wanted to impress you uh, because it's not just an art style change. The thing that blew me away was when the gameplay styles started blending in. You, you know, you there's the first one where you turn into a little squid, a little voxel squid, and you just you're just floating around a little you're floating around, you're navigating the level design, trying to not get hit by the uh, electric panels around the side, the enemies. And then, you know, it it doesn't just stop there. You just you just become stew a little at one point and you have to navigate this little maze and you have to memorize the enemy patterns, where they're gonna go. It's very hard and the the first time you do it you're gonna be kind of frustrated but when you come back to it that flow and that thrill you get when you correctly guess uh, all of their positions and just keep going it's just <laughs> you feel unstoppable man all of these things together it's unlike any other experience i've had in a sonic game because you know guess what you thought you thought it was cool that they, they transformed into and just do a little Fuck you you're a rocket ship now no crashing into blocks, just zooming straight through everything. Love that stage. And I think the visuals aren't just beautiful in terms of a, oh, look at this, it's kind of cool that they voxeled everything. It's like even everything in the background, these tall pillars have like this digital aberration. Like it's definitely the most memorable stage in the game and a perfect representation of everything I love about Classic Sonic. When you look for secrets, when you try to find an upper path, branching pathways, which are all over this game, you are rewarded either either with a collectible, a boost to your speed, a new shortcut, a giant ring. Even though I have a lot of praise, I think there's far too much reliance on the old here, man. Like I think it's pretty clear they just wanted to make a very safe Sonic game here because Lagoon City is very much like Hydra City with you know the water gimmicks that it has all around. It's it does it even does the pole thing in Hydra City. If I'm not wrong, I'm pretty sure they just reused the bubble thing. That Mania put in. No, I'm pretty sure that was in both actually. They've technically reused Sonic 1 and 2 gimmicks, but you know, that's, 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 that's how you make a Sonic game is by reusing Sonic 1 and 2 gimmicks. So I'm not gonna hold that against them. Uh, but on top of that, press Factory Act 2. Does the oil ocean thing where you have to jump on switches to prevent yourself from dying. The ice blocks from Press Garden are repeated in Frozen Base. I feel like too many of these levels don't have their own inventive gimmicks. They do reuse many stuff. Like I could go on on and on and that's not a good thing it's like for a hardcore fan like me there's just too much here that's reused in a game where every single thing was supposed to be unique you know i actually do want to add on the emerald powers it's such an underrated mechanic that you know they're there when you feel like using them or, or when you're prompted to use them but you aren't forced to do emerald powers just to be able to navigate the levels. However, getting extra acts centered around these emerald powers, like how Mario Wonder does it, would have been great. And it would have greatly added to the content of the game, further justifying the full price. Sonic Superstars boss fights next. Okay, so bosses were great. I I, I loved them. And I realized I, I don't think I'm actually in the majority there. I think a lot of people didn't like them. You know, you know what I gotta say? It's a 
skill issue. You guys all suck. I am the only good one here. No, um, they were very unique. They had memorable concepts, memorable ways to defeat them. It was very different. It's like I had the opposite problem with the bosses where I actually feel like they went the extra mile to make them stand out. One of the bosses that I really liked is, I think it's Speed Jungle, where this big sphere, you have to match the lines to his character model. And I just really thought that was fun. An interesting idea that I couldn't think of that had been done before. In between, he dances around on a pole like a common street hussy and tries to smash your body with his. It's a pretty fun fight. There's many fun ideas. And I think one of the reasons I like a lot of these bosses is that they do involve the stage theme into their design concepts, such as that clown boss just has dozens of coins scattered around and you need to flip every single one of them so you can ha attack him. Meanwhile, surrounded by pinballs that will no doubt push you into Nikola Tesla's creation. It's just, it was really refreshing to run into that after a whole stage. And to be honest, I could go on and on about how creative the majority of these boss fights were. The, the one issue I will agree on is there's way too much waiting. You know, it, I think when you're playing the levels on replays, I just can't really be bothered fighting the bosses again, even though I enjoyed them. They're just a very, they're a bit too slow. Time attack is way more fun because you don't have to deal with that. I just want to say the wait your turn type of boss isn't exclusive to superstars. God, so many Sonic games have had that type of boss, uh, especially in Sonic, uh, classic Sonic games like Sonic 2, 3, Mania. I, sh I should say I haven't played every single boss yet. I haven't played Fang's uh, Return or the final Super Sonic yet. So maybe maybe my opinion would change by fighting those, but th I thought the Golden Capital Fang fight was intense. It had so many different aspects to it that you just never were bored. It's very engaging. That's the thing I liked about it. It's, it was a very engaging and, you know, remembering Pans is the bread and butter of those bosses. So I feel like the complaining that I'm seeing about it, I hate being this guy, but it kind of did feel like a skill issue. The core graphics and animation, I'm pretty sure those are, you know, the same across all versions also. So I, I don't think it really affects how I feel about the art style. I just want to make that clear right before I talk about the visuals. Not everything looks bad. I, I don't even think everything looks necessarily mediocre, as some parts of this game are quite vibrant, you know, in terms of color scheme and how everything reflects the each other. Like, there's two zones in specific that I think are perfect visually, but everything else has this really, really flat look to it. Um, a lot of stage themes just are kind of basic and they don't, I don't know, they don't exactly stick out, you know, like pinball, carnival, speed jump. Like, I feel like the characteristics that you could apply to stuff like that and frozen base, you could apply to a lot of other stages in Sonic games. It's a forest, it's a um, military zone. The thing I want to point out is you want to compare this to Sonic Generations, a game that came out, what, 10, 12 years ago at this point? Compare the details, compare all of the different things you could point out in the background and compare those classic stages to this. And there's such a stark difference, in, not just in terms of details and backgrounds and environments, but in terms of the textures, they're just not as flat, they're not as plain. The two stages that I think don't fall into this category are Cyber Station and Bridge Sun, which are unique, that that's just so interesting to look at. And you know what, what's funny is both of these happen to be blocky. If we ever get a Superstar uh, Generations 2, they would probably take Cyber Station or Bridge Zone from it. The animations as well are, are another facet, faucet, Faucet, facet, faucet, faucet of the um, visuals that I think just kind of suck. Most of the bad animations, I'll admit, are bosses. Uh, it's just, it's funny. It's like they had no clue how to animate robotic enemies in the game. It's it, it's not an issue that extends to gameplay animation. Uh, like I'm sure you can see, Sonic, for example, he is just bouncy. He's alive. All of the characters are animated great. It's just when when the animations are bad, they're bad. You know, they stick out in a, in a full price game that's kind of outrageous. The biggest victim of the bad animation animations are the cutscenes, which they aren't great. They're a bit lifeless, like not the 2D um, animations, which I think are great. I'm mainly talking about the 3D animation here, which I think is just very, it feels kind of amateurish and it kind of makes me think that, yeah, indeed the game was very rushed. A polished game wouldn't have things like that. I think a thing that adds to the cutscenes kind of looking amateurish is the fact that there's no subtitles, there's no voice acting, they're just kind of 
walking around and you know if, if you look at Sonic Mania for example or Sonic 3 it doesn't even compare even though those don't have voice acting or subtitles they don't have that empty feeling in them and I think uh, speaking of the sound you know, I think it's first, but it's best to start off with the sound effects, which a lot of them are reused. Like, okay, some of them make sense. It's like, you know, the war or the, the sound when you hit an enemy. I guess I can understand some things like the ring sound effect, but there's just random things here that are just lifted from previous games. Um, biggest thing for me was when the Mania results team was just lifted from the original game, which is like, what? Why? It felt, I don't want to say it's not lazy because i i get that they were likely rushed but it comes off that way when you have sound effects that are reused from other games and you have that song that should i think be unique whenever they make a new like no matter what they should make that one unique to every new sonic game and apparently they had like 15 composers 25 compose i don't even know they had a lot of people in the composer section and it's like no one no one could think of a new results team you liked it that much and then there's also the soundtrack which if i'm gonna be honest i'm I'm kind of disappointed. It's a mixed bag. Like the Sonic 4-esque sounds are mostly discardable. I think that's that's a common opinion. I feel safe walking outside after saying that. Um, Press Factory, I think is the best example. Golden Capital. These songs just sound very, I think bland is the right word to say because they blend in with each other, you know? I think I, I was most disappointed about the world map being Sonic 4. Also, I think the main menu theme, I just, I'm not a fan. I, I want to get off those screens as quickly as possible because it just, it feels kind of repetitive. I just feel like Jun Suno needs to use other presets, man. The, the reason these songs blend together is because I think he just uses the same synths, which I don't really, I don't really get. None of the songs actually sound like Sonic 3-esque. They sound like Sonic 1. You know, the, the drum snare, I'm 90% sure that's from, like, if, if I had to pin it to a song, it'd be Sonic to Metropolis. The t Lope songs, oh my god, this they, they stand out. They do stand out, as do other ones. So things like Speed Jungle, which Speed Jungle Act 2, holy shit, is good. I had that stuck in my head for like five days straight. And I think the only reason it's not stuck in my head right now is because I listened to it to death. Cyber Station, holy shit. I just ha constantly have reasons to love that level because it starts off with, oh, oh, oh my god, no, what a, oh. Oh, it's, oh my God, it's so good. Sonic Forest drums. And then, but it has the build up to, no, no, no. This is something different. It's like, dun, 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 You know? You're in a different world now, okay? You better prepare yourself, boy. That Cyber Station's boss theme as well. The intro is so Sonic Frontiers. I Well, I guess it's bright car, but it's Sonic Frontiers. I'm just disappointed to say that the soundtrack is mostly just okay. You know, it doesn't hit one of the weakest mainline OSTs in my opinion. It's just all the things I just said contribute to me being not even above Lost World, but you know, definitely better than either of the four games. It has some really good songs. I just, I, I also just want to quickly say, apologize to Sonic Force's classic music. Yeah, no, I mean, okay, Windy Hill, not Windy Hill, Faded Hills is a little bit, you know, it's got a little bit of um, potential, but it's, it's not, I understand why people hate that one, but every other song, it's the right amount of, oh, this is so retro and then but it's the right amount of that it doesn't sound outdated it sounds modern-ish you know, i'm at the end of the main things that i want to say about sonic superstars and i just want to express no no way should this game be full price if there was a price that sonic superstars should have launched with i'd recommend that they put it at 40 pounds i'm gonna say pounds i'm at 40 pounds it does not have the content of a full price game and as i just expressed i don't think it has the polish of one either especially because we have two other games that just released that showed what a full price game should look and feel like. Not feel, sound, I don't know, look, mainly look. Sonic Frontiers felt way more worthy of that price than this game does. You know, that game had a base of 20 hours, hours on everything, but content is what matters. I'll admit there's, there's more content in this game than people realize. It's not $60 content. You know, there's 19 regular stages in Sonic Supercells and there's seven extra stages here. If I'm correct, I could be wrong. For comparison, Sonic Mania was at 24. That's, that's insane. It doesn't really matter that extra things that Sonic Superstars has because the fact that Sonic Mania was at 24 stages, a fraction of the price is such a 
big strike against it. On top of that, it didn't have the polish issues that I talked about in this whole segment. This was the part where I was going to say the battle mode looked good, but they didn't include matchmaking. Yeah, so I, I didn't realize that start game and start games. I thought it was like this option right here, which 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 is right under start game, and there's also a separate selection. Anyway, battle mode's okay. It was better than I initially predicted. It's not something I see myself investing time into, mainly because I keep disconnected from the match. Don't know which company to blame, but I'm thinking Bungie. You're right, okay, look. Overall, Superstars is a good game. It's really good. And I want to shout that from the rooftops. This is a good game. It's not deserving of some of the low things people are saying about it. It's not mid. I hate that word. It's not mid. It's not mediocre. It's good. But the thing is, Sega is going to realize what a f***ing stupid mistake it was to have made this game a full price title only three days before um, Super Mario Wonder, while well, being the same price as Super Mario Wonder. And speaking of which... Where the hell do I even begin? No, seriously, what? Why? How? Where? There's, there's so much here I appreciate. You know, f first of all, I did not think yeah, in a million years we would be getting another 2D Mario on this console. You know, Mario Maker 2 and New Deluxe were already here. You know, I kind of figured yeah, that would be pretty much enough to hold over the majority of Mario fans. You know, two mainline Mario games were already on the console. So I thought something like this would obviously be safe for Switch 2, especially Especially something that is so, you know, it's so creative, it's so good. But, you know, I, I think they just really, they just really, really wanted to have a fantastic 2023. And I think they just really, really wanted to push the Switch into even better status before going ahead with the sequel. I, you know, Mario Wonder in pre-release, that always, always seemed really, really good. And obviously far exceeding new Mario because just one glimpse I showed you that they weren't going to just copy and paste the same level design the same ideas this was going to be new and new and new surely it can't be that good right okay visuals visuals i think is a great place to kick off of. First of all, this is arguably the most polished 2D game Nintendo has ever released. I, I really can't think of a single comparable 2D game, you know? World now... Uh, Tropical Freeze and Rayman, no, Ray, well not Rayman because that's not Nintendo, but Tropical Freeze I've heard is very comparable, but I haven't finished that game, so I don't know if it's true or not, I've just heard it's a contender. This is the same car, new Mario style, however it's completely refurbished, I want to say, I feel like there's a great word to represent every single graphical and visual change that they've made here, you know, and that, those strides. Beautiful graphics that just at times, yeah, I had me just standing there with my mouth open, and I'm not exaggerating to make it seem like, oh, it's that, no, I genuinely, at times, were just standing there in the game with my mouth open, just taking in every single detail. That's how, that's how unbelievable this game's visuals were when I first started it up and it hit my eyes. Real life doesn't look this good, okay? It looks better than real life. That's what they accomplished here. The grass looks so good. It really good. It's so, it's so soft here. It's so warm. It's fuzzy. It's just, I want to just sleep there. To be honest, I'd love to just sleep there forever. Maybe grab a bite and, you know, why not? So, okay. They passed the grass test. What else? Meticulously detailed walls, you know, gra around. I don't, I don't know what to call it. It's like the thing that is facing you, that Mario and everyone is stepping on. I don't, actually, that's weird when you think about it. It's like, yeah, I guess it makes sense. Let's not think about it too much. Let's not break our minds. Anyway, you know, there's just very, a lot of rounded patterns and designs all over it. Amidst all the gameplay is a bunch of, you know, like visual effects plumps of cloud plumps you know what? yeah plumps of clouds whenever you begin to run or when you hop when it's raining which I, i'm 90 percent sure was not done in a previous mario game droplets of rain come out stars dashing out uh you know when you when you hit a block or when you collide with something flowers uh when you jump at least i'm pretty sure those are flowers which match the fact that it is the flower kingdom there's a big emphasis on flowers in this game and the way that they kind of break apart is it's fluid it's nice and uh it's very flowy love it of course when you collect the wonder flower there's strobes of light pretty much everywhere it's like it's so vibrant everything about the you know coming together obviously the great core graphics and all the visual effects it just looks so detailed it's so polished and it's so colorful man the way it seamlessly jumps from stage theme to stage theme to stage theme to stage theme is nothing short of impressive they somehow managed to keep it different 
without being predictable. And sure, there are some fairly average stage themes being used here, but it's so great how one world can center around something, but they see the script and they throw it out and they say, F it, we'll do something else, because why not? Which is actually kind of the 3D world style of doing things. It just gets even better when you hit a wonder flower, which is insane to me. You can simply focus on like the smallest of things uh, happening in the environment, you know, the foreground and background. You could just find pixies flying throughout the air, your trees rustling in the wind, clouds glittering with light in the sky, in the midnight sky, night sky, whatever. If you do look closely, there, there is a translucent fog covering Bowser's big ship face. It, oh, it's so smart. You know, like, like map-wise, it makes so much sense for that to be there. It's just so cool that they actually did it. It might just be the best looking Mario game I've ever played. Now, if I'm purely speaking objectively, e even more so than like, what is or galaxy just as a whole it's so dripping with polish and detail that you just don't see in every game you rarely see that in any game the visuals aren't just the component of graphics it's also the attention to detail that they've added in here with a whole host of i don't know, even hundreds maybe of animations it's crazy what you can discover in this game when you really pay attention to it goombas like <laughs> to their friend fucking dying or if you like wake them up which you know they sleep now they sleep now they sleep now uh like if you shake them and then they just open their mouths and lose their shit you know sticking on the goomba topic uh something that's so cool is the fact that the goombas don't just um walk into you now they also bite you when they walk into you their mouths kind of open their, their eyes kind of curve you know like they're so happy with themselves that they've managed to take a bite out of you but that extends to not just enemies but also you the character mario I don't, I don't really need to say much about the makeover they've given mario himself compared to what he was like before you know i'm just gonna point out some of the animations that i love like when you're an elephant uh, as mario luigi or even daisy elephant characters just kind of push their hands up when you crash up and it's like it's a it's a small thing I, I kind of figured they would just slide across but it's like every single thing in a game is handcrafted you can't just speak to a character model and be like all right go left Go right, okay, no, no jump. All right, just need you to flail around in the air. All right, good. They've even changed the way characters walk into doors now. And while that's cool and all, I think the real highlight of that is watching the elephant characters try to get in. You know, he's slightly struggling to get in there, shaking his booties, the little tail is going up and down. Because, at least for me, when I discovered some of these extra animations that I wouldn't have normally seen, it's very entertaining. All those extra touches and details just come together to give this game a fantastic personality. It's the fact that not just Mario, but also the other characters uh, have the same level of numerous quality animation, I, I, I think. You know, it's not just him that they've dedicated this time to, it's different character models where you can see that they haven't just copy pasted these things onto. Everyone moves differently. Everyone has their own signature emotions. And what's crazy, it's, you know, it's not just the way their bodies move, it's their eyes, it's their hands, it's their legs. And even outside of gameplay, nothing is truly static. So like I said, some of the tiniest things on screen will have been given some sort of animation, movement, some sort of effect. This game is alive. It's breathing. It has blood. It has saliva. And to me, it's way more impressive than uber realistic graphics, even though those in their own respect require a lot of time and attention. As much as I've enjoyed the rest of the game, the visuals are genuinely the highest point for me. And I feel it's kind of hammered down just how important graphics are to the whole experience. You can have amazing gameplay, but a game isn't going to reach that next level unless Unless the visuals have that same amount of time, but also creativity mixed into it. Alright, I think at this point I've gushed enough about how I judge a book by its cover, so let's get to the gameplay. Bowser is a scary house now, and this adventure is centered around repossessing his brain. I won't be talking too much about the story, but it's simple, it adds lore, and it doesn't involve Peach accidentally tripping into Bowser's warm biceps, so I'm pleased. It's pretty much 3D Mario style, as wonder seas are needed for a progression, as opposed to the simple world maps go here go here go here of the previous games and eventually you know the game does open up and lets you do whatever the hell you want which i love i've been thinking this word a lot in my mind while i was playing it but it's like adaptive difficulty uh you run 
into a four-star level that you don't want to do, you don't have to do it. Unless it's a castle, unless it's a mandatory mission, you don't have to do what you uh, spot on the map. You can just pick and choose. Controls uh, of Wonder, you know, practically identical to New Super Mario Bros. For the most part, it feels just as compact as you expect. Now, there is this ludicrous, wondrous, haha, <laughs> insane layer of depth added with the Wonder Flower. F***ing love the Wonder Flower, dude. Oh my god. God, is it a blast. It's a joy. And you know, the most insane, insane shit can happen. You can be dashing and then you hit the Wonder Flower and you've turned into an enemy and you're just soaring across the skies, you know, landing these insane large jumps, but still dashing. It's just so much fun to see what shit they come up with. It's surprise after surprise after surprise. You get the idea. You never know what to expect when you click on a Wonder Flower. Just when you think you've pinned it down and you know what's going to happen next. Like, okay, guys, come on. Obviously, that block there is gonna transform into an enemy and start trying to eat me. Like, that's, you know, I can predict it. No, f you, you're in 3D world now. It doesn't even make sense, but yeah, okay, I guess we're top down now. My question is, what is Mario seeing when all of this is unfolding? Is his life just 2D? Yeah, even airships are affected by this. Like, when you grab a Wonder Flower, you know, you're going through, you're proceeding through it as normal. Grab the Wonder Flower, the US military has optics on you and they will fire if necessary. Oh, it's a mortar. You're just being f bombed by Bowser when the Wonder Flower comes out. Like, it doesn't even change anything about the level. It's just, yeah, okay. So, I'm thinking for this one. I was against to an AC-130. And I will say about that, I was a little bit disappointed when every airship, if I'm not wrong, basically just reuses that same uh, Wonder Flower gimmick. Eh, I can't, I can't really be too disappointed about that considering everything else the game does. An original level can actually just be a ton of fun on its own, with even if you don't get the Wonder Seed. Crazy diverse enemy, Ross. You know, birds that fly, birds that die, birds that stick their beak into the wall, mummies you can unwrap. Because they often design levels around enemies, to have that be kind of the main gimmick. If you happen to pass by the Wonder Flower, you're still gonna remember that level because of big tall mushrooms, bisons, fire dino, I don't even know what they are, but fire dinos that slightly walk in front of them, they just charge at you and then they evaporate into nothingness and they miss. Nintendo did not rely on the Wonder Flower to carry these levels. They made an inventive and creative platformer on its own and then build it up from there. My favorite level thus far, you know, the hopping Hippos is up there. Maybe even my favorite level in the game. It's just a blast to bounce them around, you know, watching them fall into the hole and like actually get stuck. I gave me like a childlike sense of wonder. <laughs> That level happens so close to the introduction of the game, you know, it's like right in the first hour. Hopping, big hopping hippos just made me feel like anything was possible in Super Mario Wonder. To be honest, it only proceeded to prove me right. Angry Pimes and Sinking Pimes is probably the level that stuck with me the most. The stage is based around a simple concept of pipes that go down when you step on them, with spikes being launched at you. And the aesthetic is already really funky, so yeah, it makes for a really enjoyable level to play around in. What's special about this level is not the core level itself, but the secret wonder seed that I experienced completely unknowing of what would happen next. There was this one moment where I uh, passed a flower and you know, he briefly expressed how he didn't want to go down. Well, I'm ready to die you plant, but no, 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 no. Feast your eyes on this. These like disgusting, spiky people just start throwing shit at you and do their own dance number. It's like, how how could I have expected something like this would happen when I stepped on the pipe? It just blew my mind and I just had to get up and just laugh my head off. The way I went through the stages of malice, to awe, to confusion, to befuddlement, to pure joy. And meanwhile, the flower is doing all the speaking for me. I went on a journey with this little fella. That moment just, it is cemented to me, not only like how, how genius this flower was, but also the level of creativity Nintendo is at in wonder. I wanted to see what other people thought on, you know, YouTube. So I went online and I was surprised at how many people were annoyed at the placement. You know, because it's a secret wonder seed and I guess a lot of people passed it. I think it, you know, it just, it singled out to me just how cool some of these secrets can be. Because to you, that was just that annoying part of the game where it was some, you know, some really dumb collectible that you had to Google and then you just moved on. But to me, it was the moment where I lost my shit because I couldn't believe that just happened. Can't get enough of how this game rewarded curiosity. What else? What else? Oh, right. Badges. Game mechanic unlockables are really cool, man. They add an extra spice, a feeling of variation 
variation to the game. And these ones are so much fun, giving you a parachute, a vertical wall jump, a grappling gun? Oh my god. The game would have had enough depth with just the Wonder Flower. The fact that they're willing to give you an extra thing to play around with, not to overhype it, but this game is just such an evolution. Then, you know, of course, there are levels designed around these badges and are great little tests that are centered around one gimmick. And I was always happy to see them on the map. I was sitting there playing the game with a genuine smile on my face for like half of the game's runtime, maybe more. It just never got old, wandering over to the Wonder Flower, hearing the distortion kick in and seeing what mayhem, what ludicrous concoction Nintendo had kicked up. Let's peep the sound design. The flower. I wish I could either strangle one with a big piranha plant or hug one. The goddamn flower is a being who is ever present, the mastermind behind all of this. The gorilla glue holding this Xbox 360 controller together. The effort to make this many dynamic voice lines must have been astronomical. They managed to keep this charming little guy from becoming stale pretty much every time I walked over to see what he wants to say. The talking flower made me more immersed in the levels is something I did not think I would ever say. I sincerely hope the voice actor was paid handsomely. The soundtrack also has this um, goofy, plucky vibe. <laughs> yeah, sure, plucky. You heard me. Uh, these songs perfectly complement the everything else you see part. Catchy songs all around, but only a few that stand tall among the crowd, such as Shining Falls. Shining Falls is World 3, a serene and abstract place that doesn't look quite like anything I've seen in Mario. The music matches the energy given off by the aforementioned abstract world. The game as a whole is so musical, musical blocks, and even one hellish demonic stage that's entirely based on the timing of the song. Oh look, cool, I did it after a hundred deaths. Now oh, I just have to do the five star one. However, the real winners in sound here are the Piranha Plants. They deserve all the Grammys, all the Emmys, the Teen Choice Awards, the Game of War. Oh, sorry. They just pre-gifted it to God of War again. Okay, so this is the part where I want to go through my issues slash, you know, nitpicks with the game. Unlike Superstars, which I had more problems with, I just wanted to condense everything about Mario Wonder into one section. First, World 4 wasn't as good as the other ones. It just felt like the world with the blandest stage and visual design, with, with, I'll admit, some exceptions. I don't know why, but the wall jumping does not feel great to me. There's something about it that just feels a little imprecise to me, but maybe, maybe it's all just in my head. In general, some main levels just aren't really as good as others. Like any level with doors, I tap out. It's the exploration aspect that kills it for me. You know, I, I, I do dig it in 3D Mario and some other platforms, but, but 2D Mario, it's simply far less fluid. Having to stick around in the same area and just look for a way to figure out whatever puzzle they've laid out, it's just so much more boring than everything else this game has in store for you. I'd love to say every level is a masterpiece, but I just don't think that's true. Then you have search parties, which straight up suck for basically the same reasons. Uh, cryptic backtracking clearly isn't my ideal 2D Mario gameplay. KO Halt 2, they were good at first, and to be fair, there's nothing inherently wrong with what they're designed to be. You know, I just found myself quickly avoiding them because well, I know what to expect and they kind of drag on. Break times are just mostly not that interesting. I, I know it's hard being a Grinch, but these lose the novelty fairly quickly. You, you need to jump a few times. Boom. It's done. In my opinion, break times and KO Halls simply felt like filler to increase the game's playtime. Also the free seeds, which they were just giving them out. Don't get me wrong, they're still pretty charming, but charm doesn't automatically equal good level. Okay, I think the fact that I went through the game, basically avoiding some of this type of content is both a double, it's like a double-edged blade for the game, because on one hand, I didn't have to play things I didn't want to do. On the other hand, there's content here that just doesn't cut it. And if I ever want to 100% the game, I'm going to have to go back and do that stuff. Anyway, search pies definitely aren't filler, they're just, oh, not very fun. The dolphin kick feels like it should be part of the base move set and not a badge. And to extend on that, actually, okay, there's one specific badge that you get, which is basically just a double jump. This double jump kind of trivializes a decent portion of the platforming and also is just so much better than every single other badge. Okay, not better than every single other badge, but it's like, it's easily the most useful one because it's a fucking double jump. I did take it off sometimes just so I could have a bit more challenge, but it's like, damn, it's kind of overpowered. Some songs, some music is aggressively average, like the underwater theme. And finally, 
the bosses are just kind of whatever. They're the only things that really feel like afterthoughts compared to the rest of the game. Sure, I, I will give the game this. They do try to slightly mix it up uh, by incorporating Wonder Flowers and changing the patterns, but it's like, they're not, they're not big differences. Not substantial enough. I also heard that the final boss was excellent and it's like, it, it, it was and it wasn't. It was and it wasn't. The fight was carried by an epic, no? Amazing atmosphere that they slowly built up over the level. I greatly enjoyed the experience and the patterns being connected to his like rhythm just gave me the biggest smile. Like it was another reminder of how much personality this game has. So it's like another addition to the whole Nintendo tradition of having up this big giant face and the, the two hands. That was a nice callback. But I was expecting more from the gameplay component. It's not hard. You really only need to have gun timing and it ends so but quickly. It's like so weird that it's both climactic and anticlimactic. To wrap this up, at its worst, Mario Wonder did have some mediocre content. At its best, it's one of the best platformers I've ever played. I can't imagine them topping this, or at least I can't imagine being this impressed by another 2D Mario. I'm just so happy that I was here to see it evolve right in front of me. Wonder has essentially been in the works since 2013 with the release of Super Luigi U, so Will they go another decade without another 2D Mario game? Let's hope not. Oh hell, maybe we should hope they do take that long. Now, which is, which is, which is better, you say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean. These two games are equal to each other. Really? <laughs> How could you ask me to put them to, to put them against each other? My my babies. Am I, am I right? <sighs> oh, oh goodness gracious! I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it.